but uh, yeah, so the, the idea is, um, so yeah, so parts of it would be joined to a, uh, like partially with uh, Denis Charles Tusinski and uh, Masoud Sargar. So this was a project we started back in Regensburg. So yeah, so the <clears throat> the starting point, I guess, for these results is uh, in characteristic zero, if you have some smooth complex algebraic variety, um, then you have the, the formula which is I guess uh, called gauss bonnet formula or turin gauss bonnet formula, which tells you that the order characteristic of X can be computed using the Euler class of the tangent bundle. Um, so this is yeah some integral over the fundamental class, um, or uh, in other words, yeah some some you should. So this is a yeah Euler class or the top turn class. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, guess you I guess you suppose that the variety is proper, yeah? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry for this integration. Uh, smooth proper, yes, smooth proper complex variety. Then, uh, yeah, then you do this proper push forward of the top turn class capped with the fundamental class and you, you get the, this formula. And, uh, yeah, so the, the uh, one natural question is, uh, what if X is singular? So, so what happens if X is singular? Um, I mean, yeah, obvi an obvious problem is that you don't really have a, a tangent bundle and therefore, yeah, you cannot really take the other class of it. Um, but you have the uh, remarkable theorem of MacPherson. So MacPherson, uh, following conjecture of uh, conjecture of Deline and Grothendieck, Showed that you can somehow make sense of this conjecture, <clears throat> and so yeah, so you have um, something called a constructible function, integer-valued uh, constructible functions on X. So this just means that there is some stratification of X such that on each stratum, the function is locally constant. Um, so you have these guys, and then there's a natural map, uh, which yeah, denotes C sub X, which is um, constructed by a person, and it maps to the sound group, or you could also map to the homology if you prefer. So here it's again still important that X is uh, characteristic zero um, as in previous slide. Uh, and so you have a map to tau group, which is compatible with proper push forwards. And uh, which is basically the unique natural transformation such that uh, if X is smooth, then this class is just 
if you take the yeah, if, if you take the constructible function, which is just one uh, constant function, one on x, okay, then the image is some uh, something here, and the image is uh, in the case of a smooth thing, is uh, exactly the yeah like the total turn class. Um, capped with the fundamental class. So the total turn class of the tangent bundle capped with the capped with the fundamental class. So the Poincaré dual of, of this class. So basically, uh, if you were to just look at the n degree, then you would get back the class from the previous slide. And the compatibility with the proper push forward is uh, somehow encoding basically this integral there. So you, you can view this as a uh, singular version of the Gauss-Bonnet type of form formula in some sense. Okay, and so the way um, the way this thing is constructed, well, okay, there are many constructions by now. This was, yeah, this was really a big, uh, big result and many people uh, interpreted this in many different ways. But the characteristic zero hypothesis was uh, really important. Um, but one interesting way uh, of interpreting this is the following microlocal description of Tx. Um, and this, I think, um, I think the names for this would be uh, Cloud Saba, uh, Victor Ginsburg. And uh, Kashivara, maybe also Sato. Um, anyway, so yeah, the the idea is you can do this in two steps. Um, you can map from constructible functions to uh, so-called Lagrangian cycles. In um, on the cotangent bundle. Okay, and these are, yeah, so actually it doesn't make sense what I've written because X is, yeah, the whole point is X is not smooth, but you choose some embedding, so embed X, uh, I think there's a way, ah, oh, yes, I can move this a little bit. Okay, so um, okay, so you can embed X into a smooth scheme, I mean, um, most of the time. So for now, just assume there's some embedding. Um, <clears throat> and then you can map into uh, Lagrangian cycles on X, which are uh, on the Cotangent bundle of M, which are supported on X. Uh, um, so this is a kind of microlocalization construction. So what does microlocal mean? Microlocal means you, you study X, or you study yeah, like if it, if you have a smooth manifold M, you study M by studying the um, cotangent bundle of M. So microlocal. Working microlocally on M means working microlocally on the, the cotangent bundle, and this kind of construction is a is some incarnation of uh, this uh, this construction here is some incarnation of uh, microlocalization. It's some kind of characteristic cycle. The Lagrangian cycles basically are you can think of this as a symplectic version of yeah. So the the, the tangent bundle of course has a symplectic structure. A cotangent bundle has a symplectic structure, and the Lagrangian cycle is some kind of symplectic version of a child group, basically. You can think of it this way. <clears throat> okay, and the, the second step is uh, you just intersect with zero section. So, uh, M, this side here. Okay, and then you'll get back something on, um, on X. 
so that's uh, um, yeah that's the uh, one micro local way of thinking of this uh, yeah so now the yeah, main um, focus of my talk will be on sheaf theory type of things so um, So there is a sheet theoretic interpretation of all this stuff. So sheet theoretic interpretation. Of uh, yeah, of all these previous slides basically. And this goes back to uh, mostly Sato and also um, is recorded in a nice way in the, well, that's a debatable question, but it's recorded in the book, the famous book of Kashiwara and Shapira about microlocal analysis on manifolds. But somehow Sato, um, yeah, Mikio Sato is the, is the one who I think in the like, late 1960s, um, I think in yeah, 19, 69 or so, he introduced uh, these, these constructions and okay, his motivation was really studying uh, PDEs, like differential equations and uh, solutions to those. And uh, he came up with this microlocal approach to doing that, to studying PDEs and basically in other words, D-modules and all this stuff. Okay, so yeah, what is the, the interpretation? Well, there is a, you can look at, yeah, that actually let me simplify the notation a bit. I won't write B, this will just be constructible sheaf on X. Constructible sheaf on X. So this is a, a category, like a triangulated category if you want. And uh, you can take the growth integral group of this. Okay, so um, in the sense of a Griffin D group of triangulated categories, and there's a canonical map, which is like essentially a kind of rank, which is uh, an isomorphism to constructible functions on X. So <clears throat> This function, if you take if you take some constructible sheaf or some yeah some complex of constructible sheaves, uh, so a class here is just yeah it's just some class of a constructible sheaf. So you, you define a function, a constructible function, uh, which at any point looks at takes the rank of um, of of the fiber of the of the sheaf at that point. And when it's a constructible sheaf, this function will be constructible. And uh, there's a nice morphism like this. And so what you can now do is sort of reinterpret all these constructions in terms of sheaves. So instead of defining a map out of here, you can um, define a map like this. Um, Yeah, so you want to define some map uh, like this. So is this isomorphism because they're locally constant? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's uh, you mean the sheets? Mm -hmm. Well, they, they are only assumed uh, constructible, but somehow, yeah, locally, I mean, it means there's a stratification. Uh, I mean, yeah, lo so local, if, if it was locally constant, then it's sort of obvious, and you sort of reduce to this case by taking uh, stratification. A constructible sheaf is basically, uh, again, defined in terms of stratification. When, like, you have a stratification where the sheaf is locally constant. Yeah, so there is a, a very close analogy between the sheaves and uh, functions. And yeah, it becomes very precise in, in this form. Okay, yeah, so the, this, this churn class 
here, um, this, this is some kind of characteristic. These are called the uh, characteristic, uh, characteristic cycle. Characteristic cycle or a characteristic class. Um, and this is, yeah, so, so you have some like commutative diagram and um, this is, yeah, this thing is not so simple to define this upper map. Uh, I guess you cannot really see when I'm pointing at things, but this upper map is not so, not so straightforward to define, but actually, yeah, that's sort of where this Fourier Sato transform comes in and all this micro localization of sheaves, which again, yeah, is uh, due to Sato. Um, Yeah, so Sato uh, define a micro localization of sheaves. And so essentially, what that looks like is uh, if X is smooth, then you're going to go to, you're going to define some functor. Uh, which is the microlocalization of the sheaf, which goes to the tangent bundle, cotangent bundle. Um, and so the two ingredients are, uh, so there's a specialization map, specialization functor. And then there is a Fourier Sato transform, which uh, interchanges um, the tangent bundle. So you go from uh, the tangent bundle of X to the cotangent bundle. I mean, okay, it's a, it's a functor of sheaves, so I can just write it that way. Uh, you have a functor from, let's say, yeah, Fourier Sato transform um, from the tangent bundle to the cotangent bundle. And uh, everything here is really with a GM action. Or uh, I mean, a C star action or something. If you were doing this in a like complex analytically, but I will just write this as a GM. You have natural action of GM on a vector bundle by scaling, and um, there is a canonical functor like this. Okay. Um, yeah, then you, you can, so you can first define it this way, but yeah, also this should be GM of your, but um, you, you, you can then check that, for example, the Fourier Sato transform, uh, you know, preserves constructible objects and gives you something like this. So, uh, yeah, you get some, <clears throat> something on constructible sheets. Mm -hmm. So micro localization gives you, you know, given constructible sheets, it gives you a new uh, yeah, sorry, there's not supposed to be a GM on the, yeah. Does it only um, work for uh, the tangent bundle or it also works for any reasonable bundle and it's dual? Uh, the Fourier satellite transform works for any vector bundle, yes, exactly. So you always have a way of going to the dual and yeah, I will talk about this uh, Later, yeah. Um, yeah. So you have um, uh, you have this micro localization of sheaves. Yeah. Okay. okay. They are doing some good thing, but okay. I think can continue. Yeah. So <clears throat> so you have this. Uh, what, yeah. What am I saying here? You have the. Uh, this this functor always exists, yeah. And uh, if you have any embedding of uh, smooth manifolds or any regular embedding of algebraic scheme, then you have a specialization to the normal bundle of the embedding. So you apply this to the diagonal, okay, and that's how you 
you get this thing. Okay, so so now you, using this, you get like a shifty radic version of everything. Um, so using microlocalization or using uh, a different approach, you can define the singular support and uh, characteristic cycle. I mean, the characteristic cycles we already saw before, a characteristic cycle of a constructible function. And now you can define uh, the characteristic cycle of a constructible sheaf. Um, yeah, I won't give you the definitions now, but this is some subset of the of the tangent bundle. Okay, and then you can define. Yeah, using this, you can define some uh, characteristic class, which is not exactly the same as the characteristic cycle, but this is some cycle class uh, on the tangent bundle, which is supported on singular support. Uh, okay, so I mean, it's some linear combination of irreducible components of the singular support. And then it's uh, eventually you can define CC of X um, at F to you get some some class uh, on X. So it's so somehow you you can replace functions by Xi by doing this micro localization of Xi. Okay, so yeah, that's um, that's the sort of motivation. Uh, how much time have I used? Okay. So yeah, now the sort of, um, so this is a sort of characteristic zero story and um, there's a, an analogy due to the mean, I think. So analogy between, um, so, in the analytic setting, you have a irregular singularity. I mean, when you're studying these PDEs and these D modules and all these things that people do in that setting, this is the analytic setting. Um, and you have some analogy with uh, wild, wild ramification. The algebraic setting, like positive characteristic algebraic settings. Um, yeah, so so this is for the wild ramification of an L-adic sheath. And this is a irregular thing. Singularity of a, of a D module or like basically a PDE on a like a complex analytic manifold. Okay, so now uh, the idea is then um, there should be a, basically an algebraic version of all this stuff. Except it was already known that the, in positive characteristic, it was known for a while that these things cannot be so simple because. Yeah, because of this wild ramification stuff. And for example, you have the Grothen Dieks Og Shaparevich formula, which tells you that even for um, even for curves, if you try to do these kind of formulas, like my first formula about compatibility with proper push forward and stuff, it, it's just not true. There's some correction term you need, which is coming from like Swan conductor and stuff. So anyway, yeah, it's not so so simple. But you have this, uh, you have some formulas, and you can try to hope to get some higher dimensional analog of, of these formulas, which is what uh, Balenson and Taito have been doing recently. I mean, yeah, in, independently. Um, so they have not defined uh, micro localization, but they still have defined uh, singular support. And characteristic cycle of uh, a lattice sheet. Okay. 
Okay, so say you're working over a field of characteristic P different from L greater than zero, and uh, you have some uh, analogous results. Um, and you can eventually get um, some higher, the main sort of nice result here is some higher dimensional Grothendieck og Shafarevich formula, which uh, tells you exactly how um, proper push forward behaves with respect to these things. Yeah, but there is no uh, micro localization in the study. And uh, yeah, so there's a, uh, okay, so now this is where um, Sysinski's program comes in. So there's a program to, uh, well, basically two things. So, um, do this for motivic sheaves. Um, yeah, and by this I mean, yeah, like all the previous slides as much as possible, and in particular do um, something analogous to balance and Cyto, but uh, for motivic sheaves and sort of unify these. Uh, two previous things in some sense. And um, second of all, yeah, do a micro localization. Uh, okay, yeah, so with, uh, with the first one, I mean, do uh, do balance in cyto for conflict sheet. So do singular support characteristic cycles. And now you also want to do mu or micro localization for motivic sheaves um, so the, the first part is sort of yeah already done by balance and cyto in the aladic setting but the second part is not even done and so this is sort of a motivic version of kashivara shapira type of thing so you want to get a full picture uh, um, in the sense of kashivara shapira's look okay so this is a motivation for uh, what I'll talk about. And uh, there are, yeah, this is um, a couple years old now, but okay, there's not a single paper about this, but there are many uh, results. And I mean, I think by now we are pretty much close to having a good picture of both things. So let me just mention, um, so one, one thing is, uh, something that Sysinski did with, and then Yang, which is uh, the first part. So that's singular support and constructible sheaf. Uh, sorry, singular support and characteristic cycle uh, for something in DM, like a constructible motivic sheaf. Um, and I will, yeah, I will always work with rational coefficients. Uh, I mean, some things could be extended, but yeah, the most complete picture is, is this setting. And uh, and then there's um, a different contribution, yeah, which is Kaczynski, um, me, and uh, Sergar, which is a uh, Fourier Sato transform. Um, so this is, yeah, exactly what it sounds like, it's just a Fourier Sato transform, but now motivic setting. Um, and this is really, yeah, in, in the LADIC setting. Ah, okay, yeah, I should have mentioned. So even though there is no micro localization defined in the LADIC setting, as far as I know, there is a Fourier, there is an analog of the Fourier satchel transform and um, and that is due to, uh, that is like sort of Lamont's version of Deline's Fourier satchel, Fourier transform. Okay, so first Fourier introduced some uh, 
for Zuin or introduce some Fourier, Fourier transform for uh, LADFG. And then Lamont did a, a variant of this, which is like in, uh, for these GM equivariant sheets, so it takes all these actions into account. So it's more like the Fourier Sato transform. And what we do is a um, sort of motivic version of this. Okay, and then, so this part has worked out, this part has also worked out. And then there's also, yeah, I guess, um, work of uh, efficiency. I think by now he has basically proven most of these things is that the two approaches, so microlocalization and DM, um, plus the compatibility with the theory of singular support and characteristic cycle. So what I mean by this is that there's one way to define singular support, which is, uh, I mean, just sort of by hand. And there's another way you can recover that by taking, um, for example, you can take the microlocalization of a sheaf and that's a sheaf on the cotangent bundle and you can take its support. And then you wanna know if this is the same as the singular support of F. And uh, so this is a, a like very non-trivial result. And uh, I think now it's actually uh, proven or close to being proven in this motivic setting. Okay, so yeah, what's the- Sorry, sorry yeah. do you mind formulating this micro-localization for GM? Because yeah, so it seems you mean some, some kind of function from K0, right? Uh, well, yeah, there's, there's a functor. So I will, yeah, I will, now that I have done the sort of motivational part, I will uh, define what I mean, but yeah, it's really uh, an analog of this functor. You have some functor like this, uh, where D like constructible sheaves and the analytic sense are replaced by, uh, constructible motivic sheaves. So DM instead of D basically. I see. Thanks. Yeah, so yeah, this is this is a, the sort of motivation. I mean, as, a, yeah, as the title suggested, I will really talk about um, focus on the Fourier Sato transform and some generalization of this, which I recently realized is uh, interesting. But first, I will yeah, quickly mention what is this. Uh, Oh, uh, uh, yeah. So, um, so yeah. What is what is this? Uh, um, motivic microlocalization. Okay. So let me sort of start the talk properly now. Microlocalization. Okay, and uh, so the first thing you want to do is define the specialization to the normal bundle in general. So you have the following yeah, construction and algebraic geometry, which is a deformation to the normal cone or a variant of it. Deformation to the normal bundle. Uh, the thing is everything has a GM action which uh, is important to take into account. So if you have some uh, regular closed embedding, then you have some family of schemes over A1, where the fiber over zero is a normal bundle and the fiber over, I mean, the generic fiber is just constant. Okay, let me write this as a GM actually because maybe it's more suggestive. Um, yeah, so this is just the identity. Okay, and then you, you have uh, some family of closed immersions actually over, over this thing. And this interpolates between the zero section of the normal bundle and 
again, the original closed. Do you mean GM downstairs? Like down right corner? This thing, yeah, that is supposed to be a GM. Uh, sorry. I mean, there's. Yeah, well, you can be with everything. There. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Everything is, yeah, everything really can be done over X also. So, yeah, you can do that way. Or you could take out X, it doesn't matter. I mean, it won't be a Cartesian square the way I've written that. Um, yeah, okay, I don't know why I have done it this way, but anyway, it, was, it doesn't matter too much. Um, and this is, uh, yeah. So first of all, you, you started with um, an LCI or a regular embedding. So now I'm working in the setting of schemes. So yeah, everything will be a scheme over, well, okay, a scheme or a stack eventually, but everything will be uh, over a field Uh, but the field can be of arbitrary characteristic. So this is probably illegible, but I have written, I have attempted to write LCI. Uh, so yes, you have an LCI embedding of the uh, scheme. I mean, actually, yeah, you can extend this whole thing to facts, but I mean, it's not what I want to talk about right now. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so you have um, also a projection to X and you have um, a closed immersion here and an open embedding here. And so you can specialize a sheaf. So if you take some sheaf on some metallic sheaf, I mean, DM could really here be any theory with the uh, six operations basically in some suitable sense. And um, yeah, so if I start with something on X, then I can get to something on the normal bundle using this diagram. Uh, um, so this is just, uh, I pull back my sheath uh, to X times GM, and then I yeah, I think I push it forward. Just do yeah. If you just do the push forward, and then you do the pullback to to the normal bundle. This is yeah. Okay, you could also use the the shriek functors here. It would only differ up to a shift. Um, yeah, it's again a constructible sheaf. And uh, this is the sort of specialization to the normal bundle. I mean, uh, let's not use that notation. So this is the analog of the first part of uh, Sato's construction, specialization. And uh, so for example, you can take, um, example, yeah, if, uh, if anyone ever needs me to go back to a previous slide, then just let me know. Yeah, so um, if X is smooth, again, over my base field K, then I can look at the diagonal embedding, whose uh, normal, normal bundle is the tangent bundle. And so in that case, I would get some uh, something on X times X to uh, DMC X times X. Yeah. And I'll, I'll end up in the tangent bundle of, uh, of X. Yeah, so uh, it's a bit, uh, um, 
what did I want to do? Oh yeah, okay, okay, yeah, sorry. I have forgot to do the important thing, which is uh, this whole, basically this whole diagram has an action of GM on this thing. Um, so there's, a, there's an action of GM on uh, the normal bundle, which is just a vector bundle. And of course, yeah, there's a, I mean, an action here. And in fact, there, it turns out there's an action of GM also on this thing. So you can formulate this in terms of stacks actually. So what you can do is you can take, you can view this as a, oops. so this is some um, disclosed immersion Z inside X. Uh, you can view this as a GX variant closed immersion of a trivial thing. Uh, you can take the GM quotient in the sense of stacks. And you can do the deformation to the normal cone of those stacks. And you'll get a diagram of stacks here. And so in particular, uh, you'll get, um, in particular, you'll get uh, a, a deformation, a GM equivariant deformation to the normal cone. And that would let you define GM equivariant versions, GM equivariant version of this whole thing. So one, yeah, it's uh, not, I mean, one thing we have to do is actually define the GM equivariant category of motives. But yeah, more generally, you can define this thing for um, for stacks. And so that's one place where it's uh, convenient that I use a, um, uh, I, I work with rational coefficients. So with rational coefficients, it's very easy to define DM uh, for stacks and extend all the fixed operations and everything. And so you can yeah, make sense of, of these kind of constructions. Okay, so yeah, but uh, uh, I won't talk about exactly what these definitions are unless somebody uh, asks me to. But yeah, I can do that, I don't mind, but I, I won't do it unless I'm asked, I guess. And um, so here, yeah, you have GM actions on everything. And so what you can do if you have a sheaf on X, you can do some kind of exterior product with the constant sheaf, for example. Um, and this would be some kind of motivic micro-localization of, of X. Okay. Um, yeah, so you have various uh, sorry, this is not really the microlocalization yet, but it's a sort of, yeah, sorry, wrong, bad notation. This is not the microlocalization yet because we still want to pass the cotangent bundle, but um, it's, let's denote it like this, sort of the specialization. Okay, it's new. Okay, so yeah, this, this is, um, this construction is a pretty straightforward um, once you make sense of motives on stacks and things like this. But uh, what is yeah, more interesting maybe, or less trivial at least, is the Fourier Sato transform. Um, so if you have a vector bundle, so this is a vector bundle of some rank, um, then you can look at the, the duo also. So let's say pi duo, this is a, the dual vector bundle. And uh, the Fourier Sato transform is uh, some functor um, from DM. So again, yeah, there's a DM actions on these things by scaling. Okay, and uh, so I look at GM equivariant constructible motivic sheaves on E, and there's a functor to GM equivariant constructible sheaves on E dual. Um, so how, how do we define the functor? So you have to look at, it is really like a Fourier transform. Uh, 
So you have two uh, projections. Um, TR, TR dual. And um, so I, I should just take some pullback of F. So yeah, whatever the sheath is, you pull it back along this projection, you transfer it with something, and then you take the lower shriek. Yeah, so the, the question is what to um, what to transfer with, and so there's some canonical object. So there's a yeah, maybe mu is a bad notation, but mu is not anything to do with microlocalization. Uh, there's a natural pairing, you know, to um, to a one, and uh, yeah, so if you do a GM equivariant version of this diagram, you can take the the quotient stacks here. So E times. Yeah, actually, to to get the GM um, GM equivariance of everything, you should really do it this way. So E mod GM times. E dual mod GM. And uh, you have again the two projections to E mod GM. So this is just the notation for the quotient stack. E dual mod GM. It may not look like a G, but those are supposed to be <coughs> Gs. Uh, okay, and what's the point of doing this? Well, again, yeah, there's some natural pairing which is induced by by this one, and uh, here I have the embedding of um, GM mod GM, which is just uh, X. Uh, the notation might be a bit weird. But everything is really over X. When I write A1, I also mean over X. And GM is also sort of over X. So this is just the, uh, yeah, just X. And uh, this is the open immersion induced by the inclusion of um, GM into A1. Okay. So now the point is there's a, this object, J lower star. Of the constant sheaf, and uh, mu upper star. Okay, so this is the the kernel of the transform. Uh, is this, uh, is there any questions about this? Okay, so yeah, this is. Uh, this is just some some construction. I mean, it's um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's essentially the same as a uh, Lamont construction in the Aladic setting. Um, <clears throat> so it's some kind of homogeneous uh, Fourier-Deligne transform, but just uh, done in the setting of motives. Okay. Yeah. So, so th this is some construction. Anyway, what the definition is probably not so important, but there are some theorems, um, such as if you do the like involutivity. So, involutivity of the Fourier transform means uh, the following: if you do the Fourier photo transform of E dual after doing the Fourier set of transform of uh, with respect to E, then you get back the original sheaf um, just with a Tate twist where R is the rank of E, the vector bundle. 
so in particular, this, this functor is like an, an equivalent um, of, of categories. Uh, yeah, and, and there's some implicit identification of the double dual with the original structure bundle. And up to this identification, you have this uh, isomorphism. This is a, just a tape twist. Okay, so um, there are various nice properties of this thing. For example, if you have a morphism of vector bundles, then the Fourier Sato transform exchanges the upper star with the upper with the upper star with the lower shriek of the of the dual morphism. Um, so I won't write this down, but you can imagine if you have a morphism of vector bundles, then you have a dual morphism going the other direction, and the upper star would be the same as the lower shriek. Uh, yeah, again, up to some up to some shift basically. So it's it's kind of exchanges duality. It's kind of a and the if. Mm -hmm. Can okay. I say something? If you if the if the vector bundle was trivial or has a I don't know symmetric form, I mean when it O is the same as E, can you say something about this? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, it's an interesting question. I didn't think about this. Yeah, I'm sure there's there's something. Okay, I mean, I guess it should follow from this result because you can, if you use the isomorphism of bundles and apply it to this to this example, then uh, you would get that this isomorphism is uh, compatible with the Fourier Sato transform. So I guess it would just be equivalent also up to some up to some shift. Actually, I'm not up to some shift in this case because they would have the same rank. So yeah, I guess there is some some relation. Okay. Um, yeah. So now you can define uh, microlocalization. Uh, so you can define the microlocalization just as Sato did. And then you get um, yeah. So I guess in general you can do this for any closed embedding. Oops. Okay, and then you'll go from DM um, DM DM DMC of X to uh, DMC of the co-normal uh, bundle now with the GM action. So GM equivalent sheet on the co-normal bundle. And this is yeah just defined to be uh, the specialization functor. Oh, I think I uh, used two different notations, I think, for anyways. This is first going to the normal bundle, and then you go to the co-normal bundle. OK. So yeah, this this passage is somehow trans, um, mysterious. Like, why do you, yeah, what is the Fourier Sato transform doing? What's the big difference between the normal bundle and the uh, and the co-normal bundle anyway. But somehow, yeah, actually, I mean, actually th this specialization functor is not uh, is not even so interesting in some sense. I mean, it's it's, uh, it's interesting, but somehow this, this Fourier Sato transform is really where the action happens. And somehow after composing this, after applying the Fourier Sato transform, um, you get some, uh, in the allotic setting, at least, I don't think we have worked this out, now, in the allotic setting and in the setting of Kashiwara Shapira, you get some relation. Okay, basically, you recover. Um, you can recover vanishing cycle formalism, essentially. Sorry, uh, there's no GM action on the left. 
in over at DMCA. Yeah, no, this is just this one is just X. Yeah. Uh, but wasn't the push forward pullback that defined from GM equation things to the GM equation thing on the normal term? That was probably a mistake. Uh, oh, yeah, so we can go back to that slide. I mean, that's now I remember, yeah, that's why I put. Um, oh, okay, maybe, maybe what I did is not do that. How I'm supposed to do it. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I see now. Actually, yeah, you don't do this, um, what I wrote here. You don't pull back. You just work here, but the point is that um, that uh, x mod x times gm mod gm is just x. So when you do the gm equivariant version of this diagram, um, yeah, this notation is not good. By j, I mean I really mean the quotient of this map uh, by DM. And then that would be coming from X. Oh, and this is also not supposed to have a DM here. Yeah, I'm sorry for for very being very imprecise about things. I think it should be um, yeah, more or less correct now, except you should just take the GM quotient of this whole diagram and then do push forward and pull back. Is this clear? Yeah, okay, so you start with something on X and then look at it as a GM equation thing on X cross GM. Yeah, so exactly, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. In that sense, the original formula was also correct, more or less. <laughs> okay, yeah, anyways. So, I guess while we're on this side, I should, I'm sorry, this is the same, thing which I denoted as new at some point, probably. Okay, so uh, an interesting thing here, surprising thing is like this is, it looks very formal and everything, but it's actually quite deep in the sense that it recovers vanishing cycles, formalism of vanishing cycles. Okay, I won't talk about this um, because also we haven't done this in the motivic setting yet. Uh, there's not really uh, a good notion, I would say, of vanishing cycles so far developed, I think, for motives. I mean, there's something I do to IU, but, but yeah, I think most people are somewhat confused by this, exactly, what exactly IU does. A anyway, so yeah, the... Um, Next part of my talk, uh, how much time? Uh, okay, I have used one hour. So I think I have like one and a, another half hour or even more or yeah, something. Something like that. Okay, okay yeah. So, okay, so yeah, I will try to come to the, uh, the part of the talk which I actually wanted to talk about more, which is um, Fourier Sato transform for for perfect complexes and yeah first how to explain what this even means <clears throat> um, yeah and so of course if you have a vector bundle you can think of it as a perfect complex concentrated in degree zero but I mean, and you can define, yeah, you can define the vector bundle associated to such a thing. Uh, so what do you do in general? So E is a perfect complex. On a scheme X. So there are some, uh, yeah, I will explain how to get some geometric incarnation of this thing. So obviously the basic example, this is just to set the notation, I guess, if E0 is a locally free, um, locally free finite uh, rank sheaf, then 
there's an associated vector bundle, which for me, this might, con this, yeah, this will confuse most people, I think, but otherwise I will confuse myself and I won't be able to give the talk. So I have to use this convention. Um, spec of sim of the locally free sheath is what I call the um, vector bundle associated to this thing. So this is the growth and deep convention, which uh, nobody else really follows. But um, so in particular, sections of this are co-sections of the sheath, not sections of the sheath, or they're sections of the dual of the sheath. Uh, so, so just a warning, this is a contravariant. Is a contra contravariant. Okay, um, anyways, yeah, so this is obviously if you have a locally free sheet, so you can think of this as a perfect complex of total amplitude. Zero comma zero. Hello from Hmm. Okay, let's hope that was the end of the background noise. Okay, let's see. Yeah. So you have a perfect complex, uh, let's say tor amplitude zero zero, that's just a local free sheet. Okay, what if you have, um, okay, so the analogy uh, that we're gonna have is uh, like shifting complex by one is uh, analogous to suspension. <laughs> And uh, shifting by minus one is um, uh, yeah, I mean, instead of suspension, I should really say. like a classifying space, like B. So this is like omega. Uh, okay. Okay, so that's the sort of analogy for the following definition. Yeah, I don't know if anyone can still can, is this as loud as it sounds here? I can, I don't know what I should do at this point. I mean, we, we can hear you, but it is quite, I mean, unpleasant. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I can hear you too. Okay, should I just continue? Uh, okay, I will I think just... we should try to continue and hope that they will not do it. Right. Mathematics is not always pleasure. Okay, so yeah, so let's uh, try to make sense of this. So if you have a... Um, so E is a, is a vector bundle, let's say, and we just want to like shift it by one, then this will correspond to uh, yeah, let's use this implementation. So the vector bundle itself, yeah, this is just V of E, and yeah, because the, it's a contravariant uh, equivalent. This V. So when I shift by one, it corresponds to the minus one contraction. 
So this minus one basically turns nothing into a step and it actually corresponds to x minus e, which is just uh, like trivial action on x. So this is just another so for the classifying stack. So this is the classifying stack of the of, of e, where um, uh, yeah, a vector bundle can be viewed as an as a group, as a group scheme, and uh, okay. then you take the question. Okay, one uh, another suggestion. So this is a, a stack. Okay. Uh, in another direction, you can do the opposite thing. Okay. And so, yeah, by the analogy, this should be some loop space. And in fact, yeah, that's, that's what it is. So, um, so how do you, yeah, let me just draw this picture to make this more reasonable looking. If you take this pullback, well, you'll just get the, you'll just get X again. But if you take the homotopy pullback in uh, the derived setting, then you'll get something uh, not completely trivial at least. You'll get something interesting. Um, so this is the space of, this is like the derived loop space on uh, the derived loop space of this vector bundle. Because you can think of the homotopy pullback as the space of isomorphisms between zero and zero. So basically paths loops at the zero section of the vector bundle. So this is a kind of derived loop space and that's why it corresponds to uh, shifting by minus one. And um, well, yeah, it is it is this construction sort of, um, that's one way to define it. Yeah. Um, so what, what if you have a more general type of a thing? So, oh yeah, I should, well, let me go back to this. So now this is a, a scheme, but it's a quasi smooth. It's not smooth anymore. So this thing is a stack, which is still smooth, but this thing is now uh, only quasi smooth. So it's some kind of derived local complete intersection and it's a derived scheme. So of course, if I stayed in the world of, um, classical schemes, I would not be able to get this. I would just get X again from this construction. But somehow, yeah, if I wanna, if I wanna be able to shift in this direction, I have to introduce some derived structures. That's basically uh, what's going on here. If I wanna shift in the negative direction, I just have to introduce stack. Okay, so the problem is if you wanna do some Fourier Sato transform, you have to deal with both things because when you take the dual of something in degree one, you'll get something in degree minus one. So you now, yeah, the Fourier Sato transform actually becomes very uh, interesting. It looks very interesting in the setting because you can start from something which is smooth, like a, but stacky, and then you replace it by something which is not a stack anymore, but it's but it's not smooth also. It's just uh, it's only a scheme, but it's just quasi smooth. And similarly, you can go from something singular, something. Uh, a scheme or derived scheme with singularities, so something which is only quasi smooth, and you can do this thing, and you can actually get something which is smooth, except it's only a stack. But yeah, you have this sort of—it's a kind of nice uh, duality, I guess. And this Fourier Sato transform uh, interpolates between those two things. So, and if you have a two-term complex, Sorry. so if I shift twice to the right, then it becomes too stacky. So is it something interesting if I shift twice to the left, like instead of being quasi smooth derived at the first level, is it still something which is? Yeah, it will, it will, right, yeah. So you can you can keep shifting. So yeah, let me just say what you're saying because people could be interested also. So of course I'm only shifting one time, but you could shift again and then you'll get something which is not a stack, but a higher stack. So something which is a two stack and you can keep going in that direction. And if you keep going in the minus direction, then you get something which is more and more singular, basically. Like it will still be a derived scheme, uh, it's, but it will not be quasi smooth, but it will only be like a kind of two quasi smooth thing in the sense that the cotangent uh, complex will not be concentrated 
uh, between zero and one. Actually, I mean, in this case, the cotanin complex is just is just this guy. Uh, so it's concentrated in degree degree one homologically. But if you do this again, you'll get something concentrated in, de in degree two, which um, I mean, yeah, and in this, this is a quite exotic thing because in the setting of classical geometry, this uh, basically never happens almost. Um, but you get things which are more and more singular. Yeah, but actually somehow just by looking at the interval between minus one, zero and one, you already get a lot of interesting geometry and the applications that I'll talk about are really based on that. So I won't focus on the case of general perfect complexes so much. Okay, yeah, so now if you have some, some complex like this, well, I can think of this as a, um, so, so if, um, if I have this complex, so this is concentrated in degree zero, this is concentrated in degree one, I can view this as the, as the, the cone or the cofiber of that map. And uh, yeah, in, in other words, you have a sort of exact triangle. Um, e zero minus one to e to e one. So this is a from an exact triangle, and sort of geometrically. Again, I'm doing this contravariant thing. So geometrically, it corresponds to some diagram uh, like this. And uh, now it's a positive shift. And uh, because it's an exact triangle, the comp composition is zero. So basically it factors through zero. And the, so that means it factors through the zero bundle. So you have a commutative diagram like this, where this is the zero section. And this is, yeah, because that's a tri exact triangle. So this is actually like a pullback square. Yeah, so in fact, so you can already, you can see this diagram and guess what the correct definition should be. You should have sort of by definition, it should be the quotient in, the, in this sense. And this is, of course, yeah, this is the classifying stack of E0. Okay, so there's a, the natural map from. Um, so that map is just coming from the projection of E1. And this is then B of E0. Okay, so this is uh, sort of how you can guess. I mean, there are natural reasons uh, like universal properties and such things which uh, would lead you to uh, this, the correct definition of this thing for an arbitrary perfect complex. And then you can just check that it should be this in, the, in these special cases. But um, yeah, this is sort of something which, I mean, it's clearly encoding both parts of the complex. And moreover, from this, from this pullback, from the, these type of squares like this, you can get back um, both parts of the complex. So that's the benefit of working with stacks and taking these stacky portions is that it's, uh, it doesn't really forget the information that you're interested in. It's the same reason why working with um, derived things is important here, because if you look at this diagram here, um, if you just took the classical pullback, you'll just get X and it remembers nothing about the vector bundle. Well, this, this, uh, this stack um, does, sorry, this derived scheme does, uh, remember things about the vector bundle. In fact, this morphism, the cotangent complex of that morphism is exactly gonna give you back the, the vector bundle itself. So somehow, yeah, like if you wanna remember things when you take quotients, you should do stacks. And if you wanna remember things when you take like pullbacks or intersections, then you should do derived geometry. These are sort of like formal quotients or formal loop spaces, those kind of things. Okay, yeah, so anyways, let's, um, let's move on, I guess, just unless there are some, some questions. So yeah, so examples, the examples you, you care about are, uh, yeah, some shifted, um, 
right? Mm. So if this is a, a quasi-smooth scheme, say, you can look at some shifted uh, tangent bundles. So the one, one shifted tangent bundle is just a, um, you take the cotangent complex and uh, yeah, do this minus one. I mean, the tangent bundle, it's not a vector bundle anymore because this is just a complex, but yeah, you can do this construction. So this is the cotangent complex. And uh, so for example, I mean, you can usually embed this into some smooth scheme again, and then you can map to the base, um, spec of K or whatever. Okay, and then the cotangent complex of X would be the normal, co-normal sheaf of X inside M and uh, mapping to the cotangent sheaf of M pulled back to X. So this uh, sort of complex here. And so you see that sort of uh, in this situation, at least, so locally, you can just write this as a quotient. Um, by the, of the tangent bundle, sorry, of the normal bundle modulo the tangent bundle pulled back to X. Okay, so it's just, yeah, it's just something which encodes I mean, you don't have a, it's not smooth, right? It's only quasi-smooth. So yeah, actually I didn't explain what quasi-smooth is, but but this is basically how you can think of this. Uh, the important thing is here is X is derived and uh, it's locally given by taking the locus, zero locus of some equations on M or some section of a vector bundle, uh, but taken in a derived sense. Okay, so you have the you have the vector bundle, yeah, and then you can you can define this thing. Okay, so it's just some kind of formal formal thing, and then you can also define the the dual of this. So the dual this would be the dual of the one shifted cotangent bundle is a minus one shifted. Sorry, the one dual of the one shifted tangent bundle is the minus one shifted cotangent bundle. And now this is, so this was a stack, um, as we saw before, that kind of thing gives you a stack and this kind of thing gives you a quasi smooth scheme in general. So it's just, it's gonna be spec of sim of uh, the cotan of the tangent complex in degree one. Yeah, so, on the underlying classical schemes, it, it means you're taking the symmetric algebra on um, <clears throat> the pi minus one of the dual. So basically, you're taking the pi pi one of the of the cotangent complex, dualizing that, taking the symmetric algebra, and taking the spec. So it's some it's almost like a it's some kind of abelian cone or whatever. It's not a vector bundle, but it's almost like a vector bundle, except the dimension of the fibers can vary. So you have you have like this projection, and this is like uh, the fibers are are like roughly speaking the fibers are like this. Okay, yeah. So in the smooth case, if X is just smooth, then the one shifted tangent bundle is just the classifying stack of the tangent bundle, and this thing is. Uh, this thing is a uh, trivial, yeah. So this thing, and sometimes this thing measures the singularities of X. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, an interesting thing is um, that you can, yeah, you can do the, uh,
you can you can do um all all everything I said like you can do Fourier factor transform for for this perfect complex E and uh, <clears throat> and you can yeah so this will be like some kind of DM constructible uh, GM So V of, okay, let me just say E is the associated vector bundle and, and I mean, not vector bundle, but associated whatever that weird construction is. And uh, you can do the derived dual of this and uh, you get this thing. So uh, for example, yeah, this is most interesting when you apply it to the uh, one shifted tangent bundle of something which is quasi smooth, and you end up with something which is a uh, which is a minus one shifted cotangent bundle, and so this is some kind of micro localization on the minus one shifted cotangent bundle. Okay, so you, you get some kind of theory of micro localization. Yeah, so there's another, I mean, the other component is a specialization map, which you can also define, um, which, yeah, you can do this by a generalization of the deformation to the normal cone, uh, which will deform, instead of deforming to the normal bundle, you deform to the minus one shifted cotangent bundle. Okay, so it's some generalization of that. Uh, sorry, not you don't deform to that, you deform to this one. Yeah, you deform to to this, and, uh, and then you do this for your subtle transform. So this is the kind of the analog of, of new, and you, you have this kind of uh, weird uh, micro localization or like shifted micro localization for singular. Um, scheme, but um, you micro localize on the minus one shifted cotangent bundle. Okay, so in particular, yeah, you can then define some kind of singular support and uh, such things. Uh, and there's yeah, as a side remark. There's a analogous theory for a coherent sheaves, which was developed by uh, Rinkin and Gatesbury uh, in some work on geometric Langlands. Uh, basically, you get some, if F is a, like um, a coherent bounded, like pseudo coherent complex, whatever, uh, you can get some singular support on the minus one shifted cotangent bundle, which measures failure of F to be a perfect complex. in some sense. Like if it's just a perfect complex, then um, this is trivial. So for example, if X is a regular or a smooth scheme, then um, this would never be interesting. Um, but yeah, you can you can do something like this. But they don't have a micro localization function. They have some completely different construction of this, but it's very analogous to that. Okay, yeah, so I guess uh, it's not, Last few, last time or whatever, I will talk about some application to Donaldson Thomas theory. I don't have much time at this point, but um, yeah, so there's some motivation for the, this whole last 
uh, slides, this last slides on uh, this weird microlocalization and the, the motivation comes from some work of Behrens on uh, Donaldson Thomas theory. Um, you can, uh, uh, roughly speaking, if we go back to the first slide, you can look at this churn class, uh, McPherson churn class. Um, so McPherson churn class when X is singular. Uh, you can still describe this. Using microlocalization. When um, X is singular, so just just in the same way as that, that if X is smooth, then this thing is just the other class of the tangent bundle. So you can get some some analog of this when X is singular, but not that singular. When it comes from some um, from derived geometry, so the the keyword here is locally it's a derived critical locus. So in particular, it's quasi smooth, but uh, some additional condition. Uh, yeah, some some additional condition, uh, which means it implies that locally it's given by the zero locus of some equation like df equals zero or after some function, some regular function. Okay, so basically in some in some quasi smooth type of situation, you can you can still define this using uh, using microlocalization, and uh, yeah, so in like using this, you can get some description of virtual fundamental classes of such things um, using the, like as some other characteristic of some constructible sheaf. There is some constructible sheaf that Baron constructs whose other characteristic gives you back the virtual fundamental class of uh, something like this. Okay, so yeah, so I mean, he uses microlocalization in the sense of uh, McPherson. Um, yeah, so basically going to the defining some Lagrangian cycle on the cotangent bundle. Yeah, so what I want to do is define this in terms of sorry not constructible sheaves that's what that's what like you want to do sort of uh, do it in terms of a constructible function uh, sorry he does he does it for constructible functions and you want to do this sort of using the language of sheaves for various reasons because you want to get yeah so okay to explain the motivation I have to say some words about Donaldson Thomas theory basically if X is a Calabria threefold then there's an interesting moduli space of uh, coherent sheaves um, I won't be too precise I mean like it's a moduli stack of coherent sheaves with proper support and with some fixed class whatever but yeah roughly you have some moduli space um, and using this moduli space so this moduli space happens to have this happens to have this uh, structure because you're only looking at three folds. Uh, so you have locally it's given by some derived critical locus and you can get uh, a virtual fundamental path and integrate along it and that gives you so-called Donaldson Thomas invariance. However, there's a more refined thing. So refined DT invariant which is a, a perverse sheaf, like a perverse constructible sheaf. And then it gives you back this thing just by taking the Euler characteristic. So these are like numbers. Okay, and um, 
so this thing, uh, yeah, locally that's a sum derived critical locus and the function locally defines some vanishing cycle complex and gluing these vanishing cycle complexes is, is something non-trivial, but something which is possible gives you a per sheaf and uh, that thing gives you gives you this thing. Um, so there's some, yeah, work of, uh, I guess, Ben Bassad, Chris Brauf, Victoria Busi, and Dominic Joyce, um, which, yeah, does this kind of thing. Okay, I, anyway, so yeah, like, uh, we wanna have some, like, ideally I would like to define, describe this thing, instead of just how Berend is able to describe the, uh, the numerical Donaldson Thomas invariance using some constructible, uh, using, you know, using some, yeah, like you, basically this thing. Um, now you would like to lift this kind of thing to to de describe this constructible sheaf in terms of, um, so this sort of vanishing cycle type of sheaf, you can sort of recover the fundamental class this way. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying it, I'm not being very precise, but uh, yeah, let me, there are some questions I can try to explain better. Um, but yeah, so the theorem, so the work is, uh, yeah, this application actually is not due to me, but uh, it's an application of the Fourier Sato transform, um, generalized to perfect complexes, which was explained to me by Tatsuki Kinjo, um, which is a global dimensional, yeah, some, okay, some dimensional reduction. Um, yeah, maybe I won't explain exactly, yeah, I won't explain exactly how it is, but you can um, reduce the DT of the Donald and Thomas per sheaf to the case of two folds. Like it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't really make sense what, I, what I've written, but uh, somehow it, that's the idea of dimensional reduction. You start with something uh, three dimensional in this case, then you end up with something two dimensional. So you, it's a, like a local surface type of thing is the keyword where the Calabial is actually the total space of, um, is a canonical bundle on uh, a twofold. Okay, on, on a surface. Yeah, so uh, anyways, yeah, so the, the, the new application of Fourier Chateau transform and this microlocalized and for specialization and stuff for um, this uh, shifted kind of bundle. Um, basically gives you some kind of, yeah, roughly speaking, let's say some kind of sheafy barren Theorem. I want to, uh, in some sense, it gives you some kind of chief theoretic incarnation of, of what Berend is doing. Um, and yeah, so the, the reason is uh, there's some, uh, one thing at least that I should say to make sense of this. Yeah, so in, in this local surface case, the point is that the moduli space of X over moduli of F is actually just the minus one shifted cotangent of F. Okay, so you do dimensional reduction from this guy to this guy. And, um, and it's just this thing. So that's why you use the Fourier Sato transform. Okay, yeah, uh, I guess I should. Um, <clears throat> I should probably stop around this point. Yeah, thank you for your talk. Are there any questions?
what should be thought as the analog of that integration formula for for the Euler characteristic? Uh, you mean the, like the first slide? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what should be the analog uh, in terms of sheaves? You mean? Um, yeah, in terms of yeah, in terms of sheaves and in terms of metric sheaves. Uh, right. How how should I think of that? This context. So basically, we can only have such a theorem uh, in. Um, in characteristic zero. Yeah, I mean, so the analog, okay, if we go back to this. Um, of course, yeah, in the smooth setting, you have such formulas in, in motives as well. Uh, this, yeah, there's, there are motivic cross formulas. Uh, as long as you have a smooth proper scheme um, <clears throat> of any characteristic, you can you can do this. Yeah, but uh, the, okay, so the first thing is what if X is singular? So, mm -hmm. yeah, so what, what does this my person thing have to do with that? Basically, the compatibility with proper push forward is somehow, um, I mean, in terms of, in terms of this uh, sheaf theoretic interpretation, there is some commutative diagram, which I think is, should be the analog of this, uh, that there is some, for any proper morphism, so it's also like a relative version. I guess usually the orientation is the opposite direction. Um, yeah, so there's uh, let's do like lower star. So I have some proper morphism, and and now you want to look at this uh, CCX thing. Yeah, the CCX thing. CCY, and so this is some kind of index theorem. These are called, I think. Something like this, yeah. I, I, I think in the characteristic zero case, uh, I mean, this, this is basically, yeah. So th this is a commutative diagram by McPherson and the fact that you have this commutative diagram. Um, but in, in positive characteristic, I think this formula is just not true. And yeah, that's why, because of this wild ramification type of stuff, you, you need to do some, you need to have some correction terms that come from uh, Swan, uh, Swan conductors and things. So you have some kind of uh, Grothendieck Ogchokarevich formula, which tells you the, the right formula and then Valensen and Saito have proven some higher dimensional analog of this, I think. But this is true for smooth projectors. Yeah, yeah. For, for smooth projective, I guess it's, it's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. So, yeah, so you can do the same thing with motives. I mean, you can look at the same diagram and I think um, the goal, I think this part is not really known yet, but yeah, you want to you would like to generalize these um, these formulas to the motivic setting, but I think yeah, I think it's I think maybe there's some student of Denis Charles who is supposed to be doing this. Yeah, uh, maybe. But do you get some map from? I mean, you have K zero of motives. Uh, this is, I mean. Yeah, maybe I'm a bit confused, but I thought that this like shifty structured part implies that uh, uh, sort of numerical numerical part of the talk in the beginning, and then what's the numerical side of the motivic uh, statements? Maybe I may, maybe maybe this is the wrong question to ask. I don't know. But... Uh, so you're asking what is the what is the numerical analog of, of... Of this thing, of CCX, uh, I guess, yeah. So you you want to define something like this um, in terms of a constructible function, uh, or or I mean you'll get a number, yeah. I mean in, in this case you're you you're sort of looking at the uh, proper push over to a point, so that's why this 
a proper push for this integral is just a proper push forward and if y is a point then yeah it would be some number but yeah yeah, uh, yeah. They, they, this i understand uh, uh -huh. this is I, i'm probably asking the second question uh that uh like uh yeah this i this i agree and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious whether you can uh also uh generally go to some numerics for from like going to k0 from from the motivic statement do you have some some kind of uh k0 of motives in this picture this is oh yeah, yeah. i mean yeah there is the whole i mean that picture is also there like here everywhere you do the k0 of uh <clears throat> ah you're are you asking if there's uh something oh yeah and uh, also of course instead of k0 of x so what i meant to write is K zero of uh, constructor sheets on there. Yeah, but there's yeah, yeah, sure, uh, sure, sure. Yeah, so okay, D constructor zero. Yeah, um, so th there's um, yeah, th this is basically uh, this thing. Yeah, so this is okay. Yeah, but this was uh, in the not in the motive setting. But in the motivic setting, this is this is done by uh, Sisinski and and Emlyn Yang, uh, who define these these kind of uh -huh. things. So this will be a, like yeah, it will be uh, on K zero of this thing to uh, yeah to the same type of thing again. So so it's also Chow valued. Okay. Yeah. See. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I mean. It would be, it could be in some motivic barrel more homology, but it would be the same as child groups anyway. At least uh, up to inverting the characteristic. I mean, that, anyway, I'm working with rational coefficients everywhere. Yeah, but so there's this somehow, yeah, that is one aspect of it. I'm not so familiar with that aspect, but I think they wrote that paper like a uh, few years ago and now they're waiting for the rest of the thing to be developed before they put that paper out. I see. Yeah. Um, any, any more questions? So I have a, a kind of silly question. So when you do this uh, Fourier Sato transform, then um, why do you want to keep track of this GM action uh, at the end? Because at the end of the day, you want to land in the Chow group of X. So the like GM action is uh, it, does it play some role? Uh, actually, yeah, that is one benefit of. So that is something which uh, the GM action is not taken into account in the work of Balenson and Saito, I believe, and that is why they end up in in here. Um, but actually, yeah, in, in the motivic setting, you get something more refined because, yeah, because you take these GM actions into account, so you get something which is more like the Kashiwara Shapira thing. So Kashiwara Shapira associate uh, to a constructible sheaf some Lagrangian cycle, so some symplectic analog of this thing, and that cycle would be a conical. Um, so conical means GM invariant subset of of. Uh, of the tangent bundle. Yeah, I mean, okay, before, what I'm saying is also not quite precise because really before that you end up, um, I'm really talking about this this construction. Uh, this thing is somehow defined using this thing. So before that you end up here and you can actually get something here. Um, that's why we do it with this GM action. That's one reason. Um, because then we really want to get some conical subset just like you do in Kashiwara Shapira. So that that would be some refinement of of the balance and unsightable stuff. Does this make sense? Yeah. Okay. So it's like landing in the Lagrangian cycle before you take the support. Uh, that kind of a situation instead of right. looking mm -hmm. at it as a cycle itself. Yeah. Exactly. So somewhere here, I probably. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, I didn't write this, but. These are conical, like, you know, GM invariant uh, subsets. 
or like C star invariant, whatever, uh, subsets of the cotangent bundle. And we can really get some something very similar to like some conical algebraic factors from the cotangent bundle. Yeah. Any more questions? So if not, let's thank Adina again. <laughs>